Thousands of anti-Lukashenko protesters once again took the streets of the Belarusian capital on Sunday to demand the resignation of the country's authoritarian leader. However, authorities accused nearly 300 protesters of violating the law on mass events. The protesters have been detained in the capital city of Minsk, where crowds of people took to the streets for the 18th consecutive weekend to rally against the government. Demonstrators took part in dozens of small rallies scattered all over Minsk. This is one of the new tactics employed by the opposition to protest in smaller groups instead of a large rally to make it harder for security forces to target the protesters. The protesters carried banners and chanted slogans as they marched through the streets. <laughs> Military vehicles and water cannons were deployed in the streets of Minsk to disperse the protesters. Several subway stations were also closed and internet access was restricted. Lukashenko, who has been in power for 26 years, has shrugged off the scale of these protests, saying they are sponsored by the West. He has shown little signs of willingness to start a dialogue with the opposition. Mass protests have rocked the former Soviet Republic. Since official results from the August 9th presidential election gave Lukashenko a landslide victory. Opponents have accused the ruling party of rigging the election and they have accused the authorities of voter fraud as well. Joining us on this broadcast is Fred Weir, a Russian affairs expert, and he's joining us live from Moscow. Fred, welcome to Beyond. Thank you so much for giving us your time. This is the 18th straight weekend that protests have been held in the streets of Minsk. The protests are not dying down. Lukashenko earlier even promised some changes to the constitution and the law in uh, Belarus, but did not give any time frame. Just what is happening? Why isn't Lukashenko even indulging in a dialogue with the opposition? Well, yes, it's four months now. Uh, that's pretty impressive. It's not unique. We do get these long-lived uh, protests that go on and on in this part of the world. And also places like France, you remember the Yellow Vest protests? I think they lasted considerably longer week after week. Uh, what you have is a very determined uh, part of the population. It's it's uh, not, not a major part of the population at this time, but they're very... Uh, is going on. Uh, they, they're cha as you said, they're changing tactics. Instead of holding one big rally, they're holding fragmented ones around the city. Um, but uh, the, the thing is, and I, I, I know I sound like I put a damper on uh, this because Lukashenko has stayed too long. He almost certainly did rig the election. The protesters' cause is is uh, just and reasonable. Uh, but unless uh, something happens to reignite them, uh, to get the big, huge crowd surging back into the streets, um, Lukashenko is going to outlive this. This time, uh, he does have to make changes. He he he. Uh, has talked about constitutional reform, and uh, ironically, it's the Russians who are pressuring them hardest on, on getting on with that. Um, and also, it's possible that something, some event can happen that will will uh, get them going again. Uh, if you remember the Maidan protests in Kiev in 2013, 2014, they lasted longer in the central square of Kiev. Uh, and they seemed to be on the wane. And then those killings happened. Uh, over 100 people were shot by snipers. And suddenly the crowds were back and, and the uh, regime at that point became discredited, totally discredited. So we can't uh, rule out that something might happen to do that in, in, in Minsk as well. But at, at, at this point, it, it doesn't look like anything 
You know, uh, questions are being raised about uh, how long can Lukashenko stay in power, but uh, how, just how crucial is the backing of Russia, the backing of Kremlin and Putin for Lukashenko to retain power in Belarus? Meanwhile, uh, Russia has also said uh, that Belarus is facing unprecedented meddling by Western nations or external forces. See, I, I can't speak to the meddling uh, issue. I, I these things go on the, in the United States. Remember how they they made such a big thing out of per, uh, presumed Russian meddling in in their 2016 election. Uh, uh, authorities and and power centers do this. They always prefer to blame foreigners for their troubles, uh, and that's a good part of what's happening here too. I, uh, the the protests are of domestic origin. The cause is clearly and articulately stated by uh, the Belarusians who are who are protesting. They're not motivated from abroad, whether or not some uh, money is flowing or some propaganda is flowing from abroad. It's, it, it is a domestic crisis in Belarus. Uh, and it uh, is the, the, the longevity of it is is impressive and um, it probably not going to die down soon. What will resolve it probably is um, the, some sort of uh, change brought on, first of all, by Lukashenko. He has to initiate that constitutional reform, and he's under great pressure from Moscow to do so, because Russia holds a lot of the strings here. Russia, uh, Belarus is, is absolutely economically dependent on Russia. Um, Lukashenko personally is dependent on Russian subsidies. Uh, it, it is uh, what the Russians want is to sol solve this problem, uh, move Lukashenko out of his post and perhaps a more reliable and consistent pro-Russian regime in, whilst also perhaps making uh, Belarus more democratic or, or giving the population... Fred, there is no things. doubt at all that uh, Lukashenko depends on a backing from Moscow to retain power. Meanwhile, a lot of questions have also been raised about how the protesters are being treated uh, inside Belarus, whether or not they are being driven by any external factors. Uh, I'm sure these protesters, thousands of them, some of the biggest protests in the history of the country, uh, are driven by a real desire for change in the country. But, you know, the questions have been raised over how these protesters are being treated. The top UN human rights official, Michelle Bachelet, has called on Belarus to release all the people unlawfully arrested in post-election protests and investigate some 2,000 complaints of torture or ill treatment of the protesters in custody. Now, that's a real concern, isn't it? Of course it is. And um, I, I read recently that um, since this crisis began, there have been 30,000. Right, we'll try and uh, reconnect uh, with uh, Mr. Fred uh, whenever we can, but uh, these are some of the biggest protests in the history of Belarus. For the 18th straight weekend, protesters took to the streets of the Belarusian capital, demanding the resignation of Lukashenko. Like we just mentioned, top UN human rights official has raised concern about... Uh, ill treatment of the protesters in custody. More than 900 people, including opposition candidates, lawyers, journalists and activists are believed to be facing criminal charges in connection with these mass protests.